Hi, and welcome to my channel. I'm Lauren, this is Zoe, and Ziggy decided to stay upstairs for today's class. But before we continue, go ahead and hit that subscribe and like button so you can stay up to date on all the new classes and content that I'll be releasing. For today's class, we're going to be focusing on exercises that are from Thomas Hanna and Somatics. These are exercises that I like to integrate into my classes, especially at the beginning as a way to calm the nervous system, to warm up the body, especially if you notice that you tend to grip into those back extensors. In somatics, this is called the green light reflex. Think like you're in go mode, you're ready for action. So your back, back extensors are gripping, maybe your neck um, gets very tired or sore, you have maybe lower back pain, glutes are overly tight so think all those back muscles those posterior chain muscles are lighting up with engagement and the reason being why those muscles may be feeling stuck or tense or sore all the time is due to what's called sensory motor amnesia think of it as a habitual state of forgetfulness where your muscles forget what it's like to relax and they're constantly in that contracted state. So without further ado, let's get started. You just need a yoga mat or floor space is ideal. I know I've gotten some comments and questions in my other somatic videos of whether you can do this in a bed. You technically can. Um, if that is what is most accessible to you, but it's most ideal to be on the floor because the floor is flat and it's not going to give when you move your back. All right. So go ahead and lie all the way down. And as you do so, start with your feet planted for a moment. Take your hands to your lower back and notice if your lower back feels flat or if it feels arched and there's some space. Then see what it's like to lengthen your legs out on the ground and notice if that changes things. I know for me, the moment I lengthen my legs out, I have that space in the lower back. So that tends to be a sign that you have that swayed back position. You tend to operate in more of that green light reflex. So as you're here, go ahead and rest your hands on your belly for a moment. Close your eyes and start to draw your attention inward. Take a deep inhale, see if you can feel the ribcage expanding out as you breathe in. And as you exhale, see if you can feel the ribcage drawing back in towards itself. Again, inhale. And exhale. Continue breathing on your own as you bring your awareness to the weight of your head on the ground and the curvature of your neck. Just as you felt with your hands on the low back, perhaps you notice the curvature of your neck is kind of high off the ground. They tend to mirror one another. Or perhaps the neck feels pretty low, pretty flat. Bring your awareness to the shoulder blades, how they're resting on the ground for a moment here and notice if they feel flat or maybe they feel kind of rounded off the ground. Maybe one shoulder feels higher up towards the ear. And then scan down your back and notice again that curvature of your lower spine if it helps to kind of feel to use that third person perspective from the outside in so that you can sense from the first person perspective from the inside out in mind there's no right or wrong answer just notice what you notice and if you do feel that curvature of your low back high off the ground perhaps you feel the tailbone is very heavy if that's not the case maybe you feel the sacrum the back of the pelvis is flat the lower back is flat kind of taking in the full picture of your head neck shoulders rib cage and pelvis. Take a deep breath in one final time here before we add movement. And a big breath out. Finally, before we add movement, just notice the uh, lower body, your legs, and 
If you're feeling heavy on the tailbone, you may also notice the knees feel very high off the ground. And you may notice as we progress through this, a more relaxed body, less rigid against the floor. So from here, go ahead and plant your feet to the ground, taking your feet about hips with distance under the knees. And then you can relax your arms by your side for a moment here. We're going to do some cat cows essentially just on the floor, arching and rounding the spine. So as you inhale, you're going to arch your back, feel your weight on your tailbone, notice how the lower back arches. And if you want, you can slide your hands under the lower back so you can feel your back muscles contracting. And then exhale, you're going to round your lower back into the floor. Think like you're drawing the front of the ribs and the front of your pelvis towards one another. Feel how your belly muscles are contracting. Continue to do that. We're going to do 20 repetitions. So counting on your own here if you can. Notice that rocking movement. For me, I've hit at that halfway point. Maybe you start to place the hands on the belly and the pelvis. If your back's starting to feel tired, slow it down, maybe decrease your range of motion. For me, I have five more. And once you have completed 20, if you kind of lost count, just kind of guesstimating there. And lengthen your legs out. And notice how your body's resting now. As I mentioned, when you were doing those exercises, you may have noticed that rocking movement of your pelvis, rocking forward and back, creating a chain reaction up the body to lift and lower the ribs, to lift and lower your head and neck. Maybe you slide your hands to the lower back. If you felt your weight was very heavy on the tailbone before, perhaps you feel more balance of the pelvis, less rigid in the lower back, more relaxed and at ease, closer towards the ground. From here, go ahead and flip over onto your belly. I'm going to flip in the other way so that you can see me and I can see you. But you're going to lie face down. And turn your head towards your right, placing your left cheekbone on top of the right hand. And as you do so, you can relax your left arm by your side, legs long behind you. What we're going to do here is essentially reconnect the brain with your muscles of your back extensors here. So let's start slowly, just lifting your right elbow up and down. We're doing a total of three. So do that two more times. And you may have felt the back of that right shoulder engaging to lift the arm or to lift the elbow. Now we're going to just lift your head up. Keep your arm down and look over your right shoulder like you're pulling out of a parking spot. In addition to feeling the back of that right shoulder, you may feel a little bit of those back extensors, especially on the left side, since we are rotating as we're extending. And then lower back down and do that two more times. And then you're going to combine those two, keeping your hand connected to your cheekbone, lift your head and lift your arm. And you may feel the glutes on the left hand side engaging in addition to the back of the right shoulder and the lower back on the left side. And then lower back down. You're going to do that two more times. Okay. 
And then you're gonna keep your upper body relaxed. And now just lift your left leg three times. As you lift the leg, keep the left leg lengthened and point those toes back. You may feel the back of that right shoulder engaging, again, connecting opposite hip, left hip, to opposite shoulder, right shoulder. Once you complete three, you're gonna put all those steps together, lifting your head, your arm, and your leg. And then relax back down and do that two more times. And then relax all the way down. Now, if you're a yoga teacher, these are really great exercises to integrate into a warm up of if you're doing any kind of back extension, spinal extension work. Um, I also like to do this before any kind of uh, peak poses that require rotation of the spine and extension of the spine. I like to call these somatic uh, cobras or twisted cobras. So from here, you're going to lift your left elbow up three times and feel again the back of that left shoulder engaging. And then from here, you're going to lift your head up, just your head, keep the arm down, and look over your left shoulder. You may feel the low back on the right side engaging. Do that two more times. You may notice with all these exercises, we're contracting, relaxing, contracting, relaxing, teaching the differentiation between the two. Now we're going to combine those two steps, lifting your head and lifting your arm. Do that twice more. You may feel the glutes on the right side engaging. And then relax. Keeping the upper body relaxed, lift your right leg three times. Don't worry about what you look like. I want you to sense your body, feeling those points of engagement and connection. Then connecting all three of those steps, lifting your head, your arm, and your right leg. Full twisted cobra here, or somatic twisted cobra. I think you got one more. And then relax all the way down, resting your forehead to your hands. See if you can feel movement as you inhale. And movement as you exhale. Take two more cycles of breath. All right, so from here, when we were doing those two versions of those somatic twisted cobras, we're warming up the back extensors and rotators. Now we're going to be connecting to just the back extensors. All right, so rest your forehead down. And then from here, without pushing too much in your arms, just lift your head up and look towards the sky. You may feel back extensors on both sides engaging to make that action happen. Do that two more times. And then lower back down. And your head relax. You're going to lift your right leg up three times, keeping the left leg or right leg lengthened. And you may again feel that connection to your left shoulder like you did when you were doing those twisted cobras. Let's switch and do the other side, left leg lifting up three times. Don't worry about the furthest range of motion, just lifting to any degree where you can feel that engagement. Then we're gonna lift your right leg again three times with the lift of your head. So again, head and right leg three times. Again, contracting, relaxing, contracting, relaxing. All right, now we're gonna lift the left leg three times with your head. Notice how these movements are very gentle, they're slow, they're intuitive, so you can sense and feel versus worrying about what you look like. Good. Now, one time together, you're going to lift both legs and your head. And then relax. Finally, go ahead and press up, flip over. And as you lie to your back, we're going to do. A final exercise here, 
then come back to fully sensing your back. So you're going to take both hands behind your head. We're going to do six, six repetitions of this. So inhale, arch your back. Notice how the ribs uh, press up and your tailbone is heavy. Exhale, round the lower back to the ground and lift your head up, kind of like you're doing a sit-up. Use your hands to kind of cradle your head and your elbows will draw forward. Inhale, arch your back, elbows wide, head to the ground. Exhale, round your back, elbows forward. Good. Do that a couple, I think that was two, so uh, a total of six. So do four more. And then relax all the way down. You're gonna lengthen your legs on the floor. You can rest your hands on your belly or by your side. But now take in the full picture of your body from the inside out, sensing and feeling. If you would like to, you can take your hands to the lower back. If you press in with the thumbs, you may feel the lower back is very relaxed. It's not gripping at all. The back is lower to the ground. And as you bring your awareness to the legs even, you may notice the knees aren't as lifted. Everything is closer to the floor, even your neck, right? Because what we did there was extend, flex, extend, flex, over and over again through the spine. And what we're doing is re-educating, re-teaching what has been forgotten. And that is what it's like to work, to contract those muscles when you voluntarily want them to contract and what it's like to voluntarily relax those muscles. Sometimes we're not even aware that we are holding on to tonicity of our muscles. Even if it's a small percentage, that's a lot of wasted energy on over gripping your back, over gripping your neck and your glutes and your legs, instead of finding more balance and harmony from the inside out. Take a deep breath in. And a big sigh out. Again, breath in. And big sigh out. One more time, inhale. And exhale. Good. From here, go ahead and plant your feet to the floor one at a time. Roll to one side of your body and gently press yourself up. You may even notice a difference in how you're sitting. I know when I was sitting at the beginning, I felt like those back senses were gripping. Now I feel like my back is longer. If you think about it, if your back is curved, it's not as tall versus if your spine is straight. So you may notice that you feel taller. Your back may feel more relaxed. You may feel more balanced in how you're sitting on your sit bones. So I hope that you gained a lot from this practice, a deeper sense of connection from your body, with your body from the inside out. And as I mentioned before, hit that subscribe and like button so you can stay up to date on new classes. I'm going to be releasing more somatic pure somatic exercise classes in addition to all my other videos. I hope that you enjoyed this class and I hope you have a great rest of your day.